Hello, hello, Hannah the Suburban Witch here and today I'm going to be talking about connecting with your spirit guides. In today's video we're going to discuss what is a spirit guide or a spirit team, how you can go about connecting with them and how to validate that connection as well. my channel I'm Hannah the Suburban Witch, an intuitive tarot reader and astrologer and I love bringing my witchy content to you here on YouTube. I release a video every Wednesday and you can also find me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon and on my blog suburbanwitchery.com forward slash blog. Okay this is a topic that has been requested over and over. I have touched on it before but I haven't dedicated a full video to it. So your spirit guides are part of your spirit team, okay? So it's this is a complex thing and I'm just going to jump into it. If you have questions based on this, feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Basically, all of us have someone on the other side, a spirit on the other side or an entity, however you like to term that, that is connected to us, connected to our soul. And they are there to watch over us, to guide us, to help us through this thing that we call life in this incarnation. Now we're going to have one or two that are there from birth to death. They're going to be there the whole time. But we also have many, many, many guides that come through at different stages in our lives to help us through different periods and different challenges and different things. So sometimes these guides are ancestors and this may be someone from your bloodline in this life. This may be someone from a previous life. So a previous bloodline, that means you're not actually, they're not in your family line from this current life, but they were part of your soul family bloodline. These might be someone part of your soul group. So someone that isn't related by blood in any way, but they have been part of your spirit team or your soul group for a while. They've decided not to incarnate this time round, but instead are going to be on your team for a little bit. Sometimes your guides can be animals, although the term spirit animal is frowned upon as that is more Native American. So you may just call them your animal guide or something else. I do have an animal on my spirit team. I just refer to them by their name. I find this topic very personal. So it's not something that I do talk super openly about. My connection and my relationship to my guides is not something that I share with everybody. It is a really beautiful story and I do have a lovely relationship with them. But again, I feel quite closed on this. It's not a part of my practice that I share a lot of. And so I won't be giving you all the details, but I'll give you enough that you need to know. Now, our guides and our spirit team are there to help us. And that means you can call on them and ask them for help. So if you don't ask, they can't really do anything. They just sort of sit back and watch. They may try and give you signs, but you might not be looking for them or ready to see them either. If you, however, are saying, you know what, spirit guides, spirit team, I'm ready. Please give me a sign if this is the right thing to do or please help me to awaken my psychic abilities so I can connect with you better. They're gonna help you with that. And you're gonna start seeing signs here and there. As long as you've asked and you're open and grateful and thankful for their help, then you'll get very far with them. So how do we connect with our spirit team? The absolute best way is going to be, yes, that's right, meditation. So meditation is always going to be the best way to get in touch. You can always see a reader or a psychic or a medium who specializes in this type of work if meditation is not your strong point or something that you've struggled with. If it is something you're struggling with, I do have a video on that that may help you get into that practice. It's specifically for people who have ADHD or really struggle with the meditation in itself and giving you alternatives to traditional meditation. So the way that I will be discussing it today is through that meditation space. So again, if you're not comfortable with that, find someone who can assist you in a different way and maybe do the reading for you. But it's going to be really hard for you to build up that relationship if you're not doing it yourself, if that makes sense. Not that it's wrong, it's just a little bit harder. 
So the way that I met my guides, and this was through, you know, the help of my mentor. I have a mentor, C.B. Bjork. He's a psychic medium. And he guided me through all of this and got me to that point. And that can be a really crucial thing. If you can find a mentor, if you have access to someone that can help you through it, that's going to be really, really helpful. Doing it by yourself, there can be a lot of doubts and fears and, oh, is this real? And did I really just hear a voice and a lot of that? So it can be really useful, even if it's just a friend that is also open to these beliefs and can you know, give you a little bit of confidence in what's going on for you. So my meditation practice at the time, I was meditating at least three times a week, up to seven times a week for 20 minutes to an hour every night. Granted, my husband was living away from home on a military base, so I had a lot of free time to myself whilst my daughter slept. Now, I've been primarily working on clearing my energy centers, so my chakras, grounding and that sort of thing. And I recommend you get those down pat in your meditation practice before progressing further from there. To start the specific meditation, I actually put the intention out there. Today, I will be meditating to meet my guides. Please allow me the time and space to be able to do this. My daughter did used to wake up quite a lot throughout the night and I was hoping, please don't interrupt whilst I'm in that meditation space. I really want this to happen. And I did, I had a full hour of time to myself. Usually my cat will interrupt me whilst I'm meditating. She loves the vibes. She'll come and sit on my lap or start rubbing herself all over me because she can feel that shift in energy. But for some reason this time she just left me alone, which was fantastic and exactly what I needed. And I think that my guide set that up for me as well. So I went into my meditation and I usually start with something called box breathing. So you breathe in for a count of two or three or four. Breathe in for two, hold for two, out for two, hold for two. So that's called box breathing. It's a really good breathing practice to get into. So I did that and did my visualizations. I grounded myself and I cleared my energy centers and I did that quite quickly. And then what I was doing was basically imagining myself and I was seated at the time with my feet flat on the ground, imagined standing up out of this chair, walking forward towards the door that was in front of me, opening it up and then stepping into somewhere else. Now, for you, this could be a room, a cozy room. It could be, you know, a big black portal of nothing out in space, whatever comes to mind. For me, this was almost like stepping into a little forest, a little wooded area. It felt warm, cozy, deadly quiet, like there was no sound in this space. All the trees were almost like they were sleeping. It was a sleepy, warm, wooded place. And it was almost like I stepped through a portal into this area. And this is where I always meet my guides now. That is my special sacred place with them in the meditation space. So I got to this place, sat myself down in front of a tree, leaned back on it and just relaxed and waited, knowing that they would come when they were ready. And it was almost like a portal was in front of me at this point as well. And out through it stepped a couple of figures. Now, one of them I already knew would be there, which was my maternal grandfather. He popped through. I was like, ah, oh, hey there. <laughs> Good to see you. Knew I'd be seeing you here. And, you know, gave a cuddle, gave a hug, that sort of thing, reconnected. The next figure that came through, and to me, I noted straight away the color that she was wearing. It was female. Uh, she had long, dark hair. And she knelt in front of me. She was wearing this blue dress. And I didn't know who she was, so I said, what is your name? And I heard very, very clearly a word in my head. And again, this is where it gets a little personal, so I'm probably not going to actually share my guide's name here. It just doesn't quite feel right for me. So, but I heard this name clearly in my head phonetically so that I would know how to spell it. And that was pretty much as far as we got there. Uh, I did ask, what are you here to help me with? And she said to learn to heal and to heal others. I said, okay. And basically from there, the, it started to sort of shimmer and fade. And I thought, okay, that's as long as I can almost hold this up. So they removed themselves. I removed myself back into my chair, came back out of this meditation. First thing I did was run to my phone, <laughs> message my mentor and say, oh my goodness, it worked. I just met so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and then at the same time, I thought, I'm going to Google that name. I've never heard that word. Did I make that up? Did I make this word up? Did it just pop into my head and it was all, you know, BS? 
because the doubts do come in. So I quickly went and Googled this name and fair enough, it's actually a deity that I'd never heard of before. And she is a specific deity and wears the color blue, has dark hair from everything that you could read. And it was almost like I had never seen this information before and suddenly it all clicked and it was all validated in that way. I was like, whoa, this is real. This is, this is real. And my mentor said, okay, all right, I know you're excited, but you need to wait three days just to make sure that they are going to validate that for you. And they will. So this is the last part of the video, which is how they're going to validate it, how to validate this was actually a true occurrence, because it's not always going to be someone that's on Google, someone that you can find. Okay. So sometimes it's going to be someone else with a different name. So what I did was I waited and I was at work, I think the next day or the day after, and I was scrolling through my emails and I have the email subscription to Ethany Dawn and she does a tarot card reading in her emails. And I was reading this and it was pick a card. So I picked, all right, I'll go a card in the middle, scroll down. And when I got to it, that card had the name of my guide, was all about this specific deity and looked almost identical to what I had seen in my meditation. And I just, I got full body shivers. I, I think I was speechless. I just sat there going, that's it. That's the validation. I've never seen this before in my life. I've never seen this name. I've never heard of this deity. And suddenly within that three days time, I've received that validation. And it was very, very, very powerful. And I've since built up a really good relationship with this guide. When I'm asking for her help or her guidance in anything, I'll often light a blue candle. It just feels right to me. That's how I almost honor her. I also honor my ancestors. And I've since met a couple of other guides as well. And they've all been validated in very different ways, but very similar. And I get the full body shivers, that clairsentience feeling coming and going, this is truth. So it's really, really cool. And I can't wait to hear how it goes for you guys and what you thought of this. Did this answer all your questions? Do you have more questions about connecting with your guides? What do you want to know? Let me know and I'll make sure to respond to you or do a full video if necessary as well. So hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world today and I'll chat to you next time. Bye.